uh, very interesting and uh, comprehensively informative. So without any delay, I would like to call upon uh, Professor Gopal Arora sir, our secretary, Antarashti Sahyog Parishad, ARSP, to deliver the welcome address. Thank you very much, Samir. It is indeed a great pleasure for me uh, to be in the midst of, uh, you see, our friends, brothers and sisters uh, from different parts of the world, our Roma brothers and sisters. And uh, the Center for Roma Studies and Cultural Relations, uh, under whose ages uh, this uh, lecture series is organized uh, I may briefly mention that uh, this was, uh, this has been working for the past four years. Uh, you see, and this is with the support of Indian Council for Cultural Relations. What makes this organization special is that although engagement with our Roma brothers and sisters has been there for uh, past four or five decades, we have had uh, you know, initiatives uh, from individuals and certain organizations uh, to connect with them in the 70s, 80s, as late as in 2001 also. But this center is a first uh, formal institutionalized, uh, you see, setup to engage with the Roma community, to study about them, to provide a resource uh, to the Indian scholars also uh, to reach out uh, to them. And our first engagement started in 2016 when we organized the International Roma Conference uh, in which uh, the External Affairs Minister Shrimati Sushma Swaraj uh, inaugurated. And she proudly called, uh, uh, you see, our Roma brothers and sisters as the children of India. And she said that we are proud of uh, uh, we are proud of them, we are proud of their achievement, and we, are, uh, we would be happy to engage uh, with them. Uh, this is the 11th in the series of virtual lectures, and uh, uh, we are very privileged to have with us uh, a specialist uh, in Dr. Delia Grigor. She's a PhD in visual arts. And we are particularly happy that she would be, uh, you see, delivering her lecture on a very important subject uh, of Bharat roots of uh, Romani Pan. Bharat, as they call it, Barothan, that is, you see, the great land. And uh, we see a lot of uh, linguistic uh, similarities, a lot of traditions, cultural, uh, you know, rituals, etc., which are very common. Uh, you know, between the Roma community and uh, uh, in our India. So I think it would be a very interesting uh, uh, reading. I also take this opportunity to uh, acknowledge the contribution of, uh, you see, the scholars in the past uh, and activists, uh, you know, from India, particularly Dr. Sham Singh Shashi, uh, Mr. Janardhan Pathania, Mr. Dev Bhardwaj, Dev Bhardwaj, unfortunately, is no more with us. Mr. Rishi, Dr. Punita, Dr. Nidhi Trehan, Professor Pranansho is here. He is, uh, you know, working in this uh, uh, field. Dr. Shashi Bala. So it's great. Basic idea, you know, of uh, this uh, center was to uh, want to sensitize our own people also about uh, this uh, you know, vast extended diaspora, if I may use the term, which is over 20 million. And we do it through organizing the conferences. Uh, we issue a fortnightly uh, newsletter also, almost 19 uh, editions have so far been released. We organize cultural festivals. Uh, uh, we are uh, augmenting our library also with uh, literature and books uh, on this um, field. So all in all, uh, you see, I am uh, extremely happy that uh, this initiative that we took, uh, it is evoking a lot of interest. And I can see that with the large presence of uh, UC Roma scholars and uh, activists, uh, I am particularly uh, seeing our hands uh, uh, here. My great friend, Christina Corzon is there. Mojas Swairol is there. And uh, uh, 
if i may miss if i am missing some names kindly excuse me because i may not be personally uh, you see uh, knowing them uh, i am seeing uh, just just give me a minute i am um, uh, seeing suzan amat i am seeing uh, punita ji is here kuya farhani is there extend if i am missing out some day kindly kindly excuse me because uh, you see it's a whole galaxy uh, dr rajni sarin particularly so uh, great to connect with you we look forward to listen to the views of dr delia agregor and uh, we'll uh, you know get some new insights uh, into uh, this subject uh, so once again welcome you all over to you zameer for further proceedings thank you very much sir uh, you have uh, given a bird's eye view on the different um, uh, different activities and the commitments and objectives of uh, center for roma studies and cultural relations you also talked about the uh, historical engagement of arsp uh, with the uh, roma affairs so thank you very much sir so uh, Uh, i request uh, now i request uh, amit gupta ji our joint secretary and prastya sahyog parishad to deliver the introductory remarks and please meet ji thank you very much amit ji i'm really delighted to be in the presence of this august gathering i i believe my senior colleague uh, professor gopal ji arora has uh, has given uh, a very detailed introduction and the activities that we have been undertaking uh, since we have limited time at our disposal i would be introducing the uh, the today's speaker only and maybe in the later course of uh, the deliberations we'll be sharing more about uh, uh, the things that i have been asked to share so uh, allow me to introduce the uh, the today's speaker and uh, then we'll proceed further so we have uh, we are we are immensely happy that we have uh, with us dr delia rigor today she is a phd in visual arts specializing in anthropo anthropography uh, she is uh, romani by her birth and she held uh, several affiliations and positions she has been working as senior leader at the university of bucharest she is also the president of the romani center amare roman zetsa and she is member of the european roma institute for arts and culture she has several awards and distinctions to her credit her major publications uh, will we have a long list of uh, her academic works but i'll be just sharing a few names she has been an author of the book introduction in the study of traditional culture element of the contemporary romani identity 2001 university of bucharest she has also authored uh, the book Romani pen keystone of romani culture 2011 she has also authored the book contemporary romani identity between ethnotype and stereotype 2017 she we have a long list of uh, her academic uh, endeavors with us but we will be discussing more about it after her deliberation thank you very much over to you amit ji thank you amit ji thank you very much for your brief introductions to the uh, to uh, to our today's speaker as uh, as the topic suggest you know that's the roma bharat roots of romani pen that that uh, that suggests a very close and a strong uh, links uh, cultural links and a civilizational affinity between roma and uh, india and bharat and we'll find that the we'll find the cultural syncreticism uh, between roma and india in the lecture of uh, uh, dr delia grigore and it is also established fact that the linguistic physical cultural aspects of uh, roma are very much indian and uh, even their spiritual uh, and mystical uh, elements of life also stand on the uh, uh, lofty and a very noble pedestal of indian spirituality and mysticism so i will uh, we will uh, see that uh, we will find uh, such a uh, similarities and the uh, identical uh, cultural uh, and cultural uh, you know the cultural and traditional values between roma and india uh, so the cultural history of roma communities are composed of the uh, roots you know they they have passed through uh, rather than their physical traces uh, they they have left behind uh, during their forced migration from india during uh, 
the forced migration uh, from India around over a thousand years ago. So what survived? Generally, we find that a lot of uh, assimilation and acculturation is taking place and which are, uh, which are laying a very uh, you know, heavy impact on the Romani culture and a Romani ethnic culture, I can say that. So what survived at this point of time? I will also very much interested and, and excited to hear and listen to uh, our speaker today. Uh, there are some quintessential elements of uh, Romani culture through language, their oral history, folklore, traditions, way of life, music, dance. So these, sorry, I have to also admit, so I'm sorry. Uh, so, uh, so that is, we can see that, that we find uh, there's a lot of changes in their customs, rituals, behavioral patterns uh, are constantly taking place, mainly because of their constant, uh, you know, the constant migration to the different countries or transition to the modern societies, uh, or you know the intermingling with the local populations. Uh, these are the reasons, uh, generally, as scholars the point out uh, for uh, changes uh, in the Romani customs and culture. <laughs> However, uh, Romani groups in some regions the practice and preserve uh, century-old ethnic cultural heritage of India, including the traditional values and the practices, and the life of Romani people is strictly governed by a series of uh, customary rules, including uh, their consciousness about the cleanliness, the purity, respect, and justice. And these rules are uh, called in Romani, that's a Romano. Now she will speak, the professor, uh, uh, Dr. Delia will speak about Romani pain. That's the somehow identical. So uh, this Romani, Rom Romano, that is for Roma, that's to, uh, you know, to behave with the dignity and respect. That is the, that is the uh, hallmarks of the Roma community. Most, there are a lot of exoticism and uh, stereotypes attached against or uh, attached with the Roma community, but they behave in a very dignified manner and uh, they, they have respect for justice. So uh, that is the, uh, these practices, these, uh, these customs of ritual and uh, cleanliness and defilement helped Roma community in maintaining their Romani identity and a cultural uh, distinctness, as suggested by various Romani scholars. However, however, these practices differ. We find that uh, their practices differ in a subvariant groups of Roma community uh, uh, that's uh, owing to their places of residence or because of their, uh, you know, the traditional professions or, uh, you know, the, or uh, due to uh, social situations. So uh, these, uh, these practices differ from uh, variant groups, you know, the subgroups of Roma community. So <clears throat> the finding of uh, the various uh, studies establish a Roma's cultural link with India and Romani scholars unanimously concede to the fact that Roma and India are bound by shared culture and their lifestyle constitutes very rich tapestries of belief, values, and the customs and habits, which obviously, you know, indeed closely resemble those of India. So uh, some Romanian scholars even uh, go ahead and say that and consider that these elements of old age uh, Roman, uh, Indian cultural heritage are something, uh, are something unifier. These uh, heritage unify the different subvariant groups of Roma community. So without any further uh, deliberations, uh, because we today have the very expert and a prominent scholar uh, uh, with us, and we are very, very fortunate to, and very excited to listen to her. So now I would, uh, you know, I would like to call upon uh, Dr. Delia to uh, deliver the lecture. And, and, and again, I thank you very much. Now the virtual room is yours, Delia. Thank you very much. Namaste. Thank you very much. I'm also honored. I'm honored by this invitation and to be in such a, um, uh, such a wonderful group of uh, friends, brothers, sisters, scholars, Roma from all, all over the world and from India too. Uh, I'm trying not to, uh, to speak too much, uh, but I still prepared um, uh, around 50 minutes presentation 
about the roots of Romani pen in Bharat, in uh, our um, ancestor old country uh, and culture. <clears throat> so I will just begin this and hopefully afterwards there will be questions and comments. Talking about the affiliation between contemporary Roma identity <clears throat> and traditional Indian culture, it's like judging a priori that Europe was born in India, which is perfectly plausible given the existence of a supposed common Indo-European civilization. The traditional cultures of the world meet in large spaces, so it is difficult to say that a certain element comes from a certain mother culture. On the other hand, the distance in time of about 1000 years and in space of thousands of kilometers between the Romani culture and the Indian culture prevents sometimes a direct relation of origin of the elements of ethnic identification. Placing through this point, the following ideas under the open sign of doubt, the present presentation, there's the equivalence of some Romani cultural signs with the Indian ones without pretensions of exclusiveness, but an approach as bold as it is vulnerable, namely comparative anthropology. Uh, the first chapter is about pure versus impure, Pakiv, Bacht, and Dharma, the concepts of law, honor, faith, and destiny, Pralipe, the concept of fraternity, mutual aid, and collective responsibility, identity versus otherness. For the traditional Roma, as for the ancient Indians, the traditional culture's philosophy of life is based on the opposition pure, Romanes Ujo, impure, Romanes Mahrime. Ritual purity representing the observance of universal order and harmony by conforming to the model and ritual impurity invisible, but spiritually strong, being the deviation from the model, thus breaking the intra-community pre-established balance through a series of law of behavior and conduct the validity of which has been long verified by experience. Divided into two parts, the pure upper and the impure lower, the human body is an important element on which the attention of the traditional Roma culture is directed. If a woman touches a vessel which is put on the ground with her skirt or simply passes over it, no one eats or drinks from this vessel which is why it is forbidden to place the vessels on the ground in passing places. The wife is not allowed to give her, her husband water with her bare hands, but covered with a towel or better with her own headscarf, Romanes de Clos, out of respect, Romanes Pakiv, and shame, La Gipe. Erotic symbol, the hair of both the Roma and the Indian woman is held tightly in tails, in a bun or a single tail or in two tails, even three tails. The last is for young unmarried pure girls. It is not washed in front of the others. It is not touched because it bears the attributes of impurity. During those days of the month, it is linguistic taboo. So it is forbidden to openly pronounce the name of this feminine phenomenon. So we use a linguistic euphemism during pregnancy and from six weeks up to two months before and after giving birth, the woman is seen as impure, Romanes Mahrime. So it is forbidden for her to perform a series of behaviors and actions, to bring water, to make food, especially for men, to touch the doorknob or kitchen utensils, to net the dove, to receive get, guests, to touch or to take care of the horses to receive an object directly from the man's hand, to show herself too much in the public, and in case of giving birth, to look at his father-in-law or even to leave the house. Most of these are actually ways to protect the woman from hard work during her vulnerable times. To be pure means to hold honor, ujo aipakivalo, pure and honest, and to euphemize those tendencies that might compromise your uh, your status uh, in, the, in the community and uh, your honor. The feeling of shame is especially associated with feminine sexuality, which must be euphemized so as not to defile the community, but also not to harm the community because it also represents an unleashed and irrepressible power 
possibly becoming very dangerous if overused or unrestrained. <clears throat> that is why there are infinitely more and heavier taboos applied to women than to the ones applied to men. The norms of purity are deliberately numerous and can be classified according to several criteria. Purity of body and moral law, customary conduct, taboo code, responsibility to the community, law of honor and brotherhood, pakiv and pralipe. The concept of pure implies both to the physical and the spiritual dimension, the former assuming the latter, the purity of the body being nothing but a reflection, cause and effect at the same time of moral purity. Adherence to these rules is a matter of individual and collective responsibility and has as its reverse theme, the sense of shame, la jipe, a spirit in which children, especially girls, are educated and which must not be violated throughout life. Only in, this, in, in the conditions in which all these norms of purity are observed, we can speak of another essential concept of the traditional family, both in Roma one and in the Indian one, pralipe, fraternity. This could be defined by reference to the relationships established within the extended family in which sapra la sicate, all brothers are here, by the equally shared responsibility by the members of the community regarded as a large family. Collective responsibility and mutual help, complemented by mutual fraternal feeling, are basic elements of the concept of pralipe, the vault key of the traditional society of both the Roma and the Indians. The code of ritual politeness includes ways of addressing in which the affection is proven by addressing modes such as Muropral, my brother, or Muripen, my sister. In fact, the Roma men and the women, Roma women, if not husband and wife, like the Indian men and Indian women, fundamentally consider each other brothers and sisters uh, and that is why when they meet, they never engage in relationships that could compromise their status. We don't act like the gadget, the non-Roma. It is very important both for the Roma and for the Indians to believe in fate, the believe in fate, equivalent to luck. But notions being including in the complex concept of Bacht, term of Persian origin in Romani language, in this concept, there could be found beliefs possible inherited from the ancient Indian culture, such as the belief in reincarnation, the luck as an individual being also explained or justified by the accumulation of facts from a previous life. And there is a proverb, Bari Baxiles, Kanamaisas Katepipu, Sasrom Pakivalo. He is very lucky when he was here on earth, he was a Rome of honor. Uh, this is a trace of belief in reincarnation, even after uh, becoming Christian uh, of the Roma. The good luck is also linked to the state of purity, Ushipen, which confers on the individual the status of person of honor, dignity, and faith, Pakivalo Rom. The educational model, both in the traditional Roma and in the traditional Indian family, is experiential intuitive, based on children's responsibility, one upon another, and in relationship with the adults, collective responsibility, on educating the sense of shame, la jipe, and on maintaining the community's tradition. This tradition through is, uh, because it's sacred, inalienable, and adopted character, has the value of a dogma. At the center of which there stand three concepts that are fundamental. Pralipe, the revelation of fraternal relationships in the community, of mutual help and sharing of destiny, pakiv, faith, respect, and mutual trust, as well as the preservation of the state of spiritual and body purity, bacht, the culture of faith, of the good luck present in life, of those who follow the rules of pralipe and pakiv, opposed to be bacht, misfortune, bad luck, that appears in the absence of the first two, pralipe and pakiv. The cultural kinship within the Roma within the community family, with Roma community that is also the family, which defines the identity, Amesam Roma, we are Roma, does not recommend or in highly conservative family even forbids marriages with a non-Roma. 
due to a type of relationship with the otherness similar to that of religious, religious nature. We are the believers and they are the unbelievers. This ame I call a vera, us and the other, comprising the laws of magrime, impurity, and a series of taboos and rituals recommendations of impure, pure opposition. The Indian traditional culture shares the same view of impure, of the impure otherness. Breaking this rule would lead to family pollution. This is a mental and cultural barrier between the community and the rest of the world meant to preserve the ethnic marks of self-definition while maintaining balance with the environment and trying to gain relation capital in dialogue with the others. If Pakif is also, uh, is, means communion, also means communion, they has the piaster of asketanes, to eat, to drink, to cry together. Access to initiation presupposes the preservation of purity, the non-observance of the rules leading to exclusion or excommunication if we choose to use the religious language. The primordiality of the family in individual existence is proven by the fact that the person exists only in so far he or she is recognized by the community and he or she is granted a status with well-specified rights and obligations. Therefore, the controlled freedom in relationship with the outsiders, the gadget, and a fraternal collective vision in relationship with the insiders, the Roma, represents two directions of relationship in the family in both Roma and Indians. If we were to define the extended family as a large family, also comprising the grandparents, the uncles, the aunts, and the cousins, both within the Roma and the Indian communities, we could draw its coordinates in opposition to the nuclear family of Gajikano non-Roma pattern. Within the community family, the independence uh, of the individual is replaced by the emotional and customary dependence of the group. The extended family lives together and most of the times the whole neighborhood is inhabited by relatives. Usually the new liwets uh, rooms uh, for the new, li uh, new liwets, the rooms are added to the groom's father's house and a house or a house is built in the courtyard of the old home. The principles of cohabitation are the mutual uh, aid and collective responsibility. The space of the individual dwelling and the common space form a continuum generating communion. From marriage to the marriage of children and beyond, each family member takes responsibility for the other and they guarantee moral protection and economic security, ensuring their identity integrity and providing the right response in the time of crisis. The Romani pen, the community law, also similar to the Indian Dharma, I dare to say, replaces religion and by the expansion of feelings, as Malinowski would say, the desire to stay together, translates into the model of socialization. Any Roma encountered, even completely unknown, is identified as brother, pral, and treated as such from the perspective of a sprout-like family that multiplies indefinitely and that permanently adds new kingship relations. Both Roma and Indian customary law use the practices of ordeal or the divine justice based at the same time on the observance of the sacred principle, principles and laws of the community. The Romani pen, the sacred community law, deciding behavior, taboos and social order at the Roma and the Dharma, the cosmic law underlying right behavior and social order at the Indians. The most severe punishment for the community members who deliberately breaks the uh, rule, the, the community law, is the exclusion from the community that might be physical or spiritual, exclusion from rituals and events. For both Roma and Indians, the status of excluded can be acquired or inherited. To be declared mahrime, impure, polluted, unclean, and to be excluded from the community is not directly related to the idea of sin. In fact, the word and the notion of sin are not very relevant either in Romani community or in Indian culture, Both, but with that of shame, la jipe, those who not then pakive namoski do not respect the community. Being marked by the category of impure, their access to the communion 
with their own family being blocked. Now, second chapter speaks about the vision of time, space, and nature, nature, elements also of food taboos. The keystone of both the Roma and the Indians vision of the special and temporal structure of the universe is the belief in the harmony of the cosmos, the circular time, and the continuous present. The first translates into the fact that everything has its well-defined and definitive world, such as the stars, which belongs to the celestial space, the animals, which belong to the earth. Any overlap between spaces is seen as, break, as a break in the balance or deviance, and any transition from one space to another, birth and death, must be accompanied by apotropaic rituals complexes designed to protect the individual and the community from possible spiritual disturbance or impurity. Flying birds, because they pass from the terrestrial to the celestial space and vice versa, making contact with both humans and unborn angels and souls have special powers due to touching the sacred, but they can also be evil if they touch the human unprotected by in the invasion of the sacred for which the former is not spiritually prepared. The elements of nature such as rain, wind, water, trees, grass, forests, are considered endowed with spirit and capricious, uh, which is why they must be respected by man and protected uh, from impurity. The ancient Roma remember from nomadic times, the rituals of softening the spirits of nature and offering them such as the ceremony of first gift of the forest, Alieto Dine Eveshesche, the first one are offered to the forest, by which the first fruits and vegetables appeared in spring were given as an offering to the woods by putting them on the water of the river near the campsite. As for the Indians, they are believed in the spirits of trees, Yaksha, semi-divine creatures who can induce the good or evil of the family is well known. Just as in uh, India, the cow is not killed or eaten, being considered sacred, I mean in the Hinduism, uh, the mother of the family, she gives milk. In the nomadic past, the Roma refrained themselves from eating animals raised in the family, considered sacred members of the family, and the best example being the horse. Now, speaking about the vision on time, we notice that the, Ro that the Roma woman is seen of possessing a more developed sense of time, as more conservative, as the main actor of traditional culture's transmission within the family, including the mother tongue, Ideaki Shib, and because time certainly passes and its passage leaves visible signs, the woman is seen as more strongly anchored in the reality of this passage. She is the hand that acts, while the man is seen as the will behind this action the creative thinking, including for the proposal of the new. The man is seen as possessing a more developed, accurate sense of space, well determined by the social command of the laws of purity, because he makes the rules of intra-community conduct, control, and social sanction. He is seen as representing the virtually, um, uh, the road to follow, the path to be taken, because he enters in direct and permanent relationship with the otherness, through commerce and services offered, but also in a relationship of interdependence and complementarity with the woman who preserves the memory of the community. Like the Indians who perform extensive rituals of allotment, assignment, consecration, and purification, pur purification of the space in which they were to build their dwelling, uh, the nomadic Roma also carefully and pragmatically use to choose their places of temporary tent dwelling in nomadic times or camping near a forest, at the foot of the hill, near a river, near a cave, on the shore of a lake, on the edge of a village, in winter or even in the woods, in nomadic times. They mark the territory not in the sense of self-ownership, by, uh, but by purifying it and surrounding it with a protective magic circle. The head of the community surrounding the camp three times riding his horse, a symbol of authority and an apotropaic sign of the camp. This way of marking the territory is part of the Indian heritage. The Kshatriya case, the warriors doing the same in antiquity. 
The camp is organized spatially into two concentric circles, the outer one consisting of wagons and the inner one consisting of tents. The circle, the perfect shape, has both a symbolic protecti protective role and a practical role in protecting the camp. Now speak, let's speak another, another idea about the fire and the horse, another chapter. It is natural for a nomadic community as the Roma were and still are in some subgroups, at least semi-nomadic. Uh, it is natural so for a nomadic community to celebrate its main means of heating and lightening the fire. The Roma have developed around the fire, both literally and figuratively, many magical ritual complexes, of which we mention only a few. Taboo structures, fire protection, not to make fire with dirty hands, not to do and not to touch fire by a woman in her delicate time of the month, pregnant or within 40 days from giving birth, not to spit in the fire, not to sweep towards the fire. The place of fire should be keep a clean place, not a dirty place. No family member should have died in that place. The fireplace should be enchanted and purified with the burning of herbs, not to throw food scraps in the, into the fire, not to set fire uh, on an old hearth because you do not know if this was dirty or not. The presence of fire in the family customs. At birth, the child is blessed in front of the fire. The bride and groom receive the blessing of their parents in front of the fire. The bride's necklace is passed through the fire to purify. At the death of someone, all the goods that belonged to the dead were burned because they are considered carriers of bibacht, misfortune or bad luck, and the community must be purified. In a reparative and healing rituals, the enchantment of the sick and the, the herbs in the fire, the healing with charcoal extinguished in the virgin water. In the initiation test of maturity, the jumping over the fire of boys when they become men and many other rituals. As far as the Indians are concerned, fire is an essential element of the rituals of purification, consecration and sacrifice being at the same time essential in marital and funeral customs. The existence of the horse civilization can be demonstrated both at Roma and at Indians. Tetrain tegrastabut barsha, I wish your horses to live long, say a frequently used Roma wish. May your horse turn into a donkey before you take your first step, sounds a very serious Roma curse, Arman. In the Romano folklore, both St. Peter, uh, Luke Christian, and Benga, the devil, ride on a horseback. The Roma fairy tales abound with miraculous talking, flying and golden horses. Object of ritual sacrifices and symbol of the authority of the Kshatriya warriors of the Indians, the horses in the Romani traditional nomadic culture, the symbol of power, of apotropaic value, the symbol of male fertility, the only animal protected from evil eye, just like the children, with the help of the red ribbons, associated with the travel. The horse has a positive symbolic value. Surrounded by a series of taboo, he must be protected from misfortune and evil. That is why pregnant women after giving birth for 40 days are forbidden to take care of horses and not even allowed to touch them. The ban is similar uh, to that of man, the horse being a male symbol. Although the, uh, an animal in the category of pure, clean, blessed, the horse is not recommended to be eaten and sold for slaughter because it is too beautiful and it is a pity to be killed, this the Roma said. Uh, however, horses meat has healing pro uh, properties when they die uh, edevlestan by God, not killed by man. The horse trade is one of the most important traditional traits of the Roma. The Lovari from the Hungarian uh, la language law horse are the Roma subgroup widespread, especially in Hungary and Transylvania, but not only, known as the as extremely skilled in raising and selling horses, and even uh, says the Roma folklore, knowledgeable of horse, the horse language, they know to speak with the horse. Another point, another chapter, the cult for children and for elders, very, very important in both our cultures. 
the god of the family, both in the Roma and in the Indians, traditional cultures, is a child, the embodiment of absolute purity, the guarantee of the continuity of the community. Children are educated in the spirit of brotherhood and of mutual help, but also of responsibility for each other. Brothers raise each other to become responsible. Girls take care of the household course, even from the age of six or five. The boys learn trades and attend men's gathering, even from the age of seven or eight. Because they are pure, so they do not fall under the law of impurity, children enjoy great freedom, counterbalanced by the sense of responsibility. The children, recently detached from the pure space of the unborn souls, carry the dowry of purity, which however, they will lose in time uh, through their very existence on earth. They can do things that are forbidden to adults, considered for the latter macrime, impure, including they can eat flying birds, they can wear clothes that do not delimit the upper part of the body pure from the lower part of the body impure. Considered able to understand everything they are told, children are exposed from the beginning of their existence to stimuli similar to those intended for their parents. Their strength of defense, moral strength, and resistance to frustration are educated. As a member of the extended family with many relatives, the child feels protect protected in the community, but must prove that he or she respects the rules of the community. Although being pure, children can have access to all kinds of information, especially girls are educated in the spirit of shame, la jipe. They euphemize their sexuality, avoiding contact with strangers, gaje, and behave in accordance with the restrictions and the recommendations of the concept of pure. It is natural that in a culture in which the family extends to the community, the adoption is nothing special. It enters the normality by which the child belongs not only to the nuclear family, but to the whole community, being a common good of the community. Today, he sleeps at home. Tomorrow, he can sleep at an aunt or another relative without his parents having anything to object to. Also at Indians, adoptions are common occurrence, especially in infertile families. Both at the Roma and at the Indians, the elders are highly regarded and respected in the community. The Indian family often proves, provides shelter and care to an elder uncle that has no children and can no longer work. At the Roma, there are privileged relationships between grandparents and grandchildren. The later addressing by Dae, mother, and Dade, father, to their grandparents and to their parents addressing my name until the de death of their grandparents. When the parents become Dai, Tai Dad, mother and father, the grandparents and not the parents are the true creators of the Romani culture. In both culture, there is a real cult for elders as a pendant of the children's cult. Never will a Roma or an Indian traditional family will put their elder in an asylum, no matter how luxurious that asylum may be. The exclusion of the elders would be their spiritual killing, so a mortal is seen as a mortal sin. At least two or three grandchildren will be seen around an old and sick relative, even a distant relative, or simply a lonely old man in the community, patiently caring for his or her suffering comforting his or her soul with dearness and tenderness, or at least keeping him or her company. In times of crisis, when the whole family is starving, there will always be something special, something sweet, or at least a fruit for the sick old man or woman. The same thing happens with the orphans. They are immediately adopted by the community and they will be seen as good brothers in the family. The old women enjoy an attention close to the veneration in both Roma and Indian families, freed from the impurity of the sexuality, but retaining the maternal miracle. She remains responsible for the education of her grandchildren as the Puri Dai, old mother, and she acquires prestige and influence upon the community. The old women play a key role in the family customs. 
They certify the bride's virginity. They bless the new lie weds, especially the old women in the community, a symbol of longevity and fertility. They attend birth and they perform rituals to purify women and to receive the newborn in the human world. They mourn the death and the dead and they make the funeral, the funeral arrangements. Their status is much higher in opposition with the Gaje non-Roma world in which old women considerably lose their intra-community value. Superior even to men, old women have the right to smoke or pass in front of the men, to eat and drink together with the men, and they conduct purification rituals. In, patriarchal, in a patriarchal society, these might be interpreted as signs of a former matriarchal community. Considered to be the holders of a unique experience, and possessing magical knowledge, deeply invested with mystical powers, the old women, whether sick, blind, or deaf, are seen as clairvoyant. They know how to bind and unleash charms. They have healing authority and access to the essence of the world through relationship with the forces of the supernatural. The old women thinking and opinions is wiser than the judgment of the Chris, traditional Roma court of justice. And when the event of an unresolved dispute come, she has the final say. All the members of the community hurry to share their meal with the old woman, even the hungry children, in order for her to have the best pieces. The blessing of the Puridai, old woman or mother, protects from any misfortune like the blessing of God. Not fulfilling a wish of hers or refusing a request of hers is perceived as a mortal sin. Now about the family, marriage customs, customs and status of women. The sacred significance of the complementarity of the archetypal roles played by women and men in the traditional Indian culture in which the wife and the mother are defined by reference to the husband when you are with a man, you exist because you participate to his substance, does not represent an inferior status of the woman, but it gives her the moral authority and unique procreative prestige, transforming her into a Shakti, the incarnation of the fertility goddess in Ved. Women the, whose destiny is to procreate, possess supreme excellence. They are worthy of adoration. They are the light of the house, in the home, wives are true goddesses of the good luck. They are no different from them. Only the women we have in front of our eyes makes it possible for us to procreate our descendants. The, the traditional Roma family is also an example of the complementarity of marital responsibilities and of the authority structures. In terms of the tasks in the social area and in the community representation, the husband enjoys three attributes, autonomy, acting and deciding, autocracy, he decides but the women act, leadership decides but acts together with the women. In the area of domestic tasks, the wife may be autonomous, decide and act, especially in the upbringing of the education of their children, or there may be a syncretic division of roles, the woman acts but decides together with her, with her husband. The traditional mother imposes inherited norms and sections, maintaining the intrinsic disciplines of the family through perseverance and rigidity, issued specific expectation of the behavior of the children, referring to the formal guidelines, which in turn were imposed uh, on her as a child. She manages the household. She ensures the children's physical and mental balance. She trains him and her in a strictly established programs of activities. The traditional father is inflexible, imposes taboos, supports the family financially and morally, imposes respect and counsels the children through the strength of his personal example. He always right, he's always right, and he has the last word in any issues or, and decides on the direction of their children, including upon their marriage. Being a parent, thus represent an obligation to society and a responsibility to the one ancestors and to the one owns identity. In the same mental paradigm, the traditional child 
must be submissive, docile, disciplined, and ready to meet exactly the expectation of his her parents. Traditional cultures follow the principle of human nature. The active element, the man ch charges the woman. He exercises control because from the beginning of the social division of labor, the man hunted, culture of hunter, being faster and stronger than, than the woman. But the woman, uh, she harvested and later cultivated the land, culture of the farmer, agriculture. Passive element, the woman becomes pregnant, gives birth uh, of the children to the children, raises them and therefore has basic role in their education. In the other words, the one who transmits the culture is the woman, the most conservative member of the traditional family. The stronger the community action of the family, the more flexible the boundaries between the family and the community. As is the case with the extended family itself having the characteristics of a community in which groups of descendants owe each other loyalty due to bilateral relations, complementary and alliance kingship. This network of kinship is created by marriage between groups of descendants, so that the relatives of one of the spouses are related to the other, and the fundamental principle is one of the exchange of equivalent values. In the Roma family, for example, accepting a gift necessarily involves offering a gift. Reciprocity intervening in the case of marriage too. Payment for the bride by the groom's family or exchange of brides in which a girl marries the brother of her future sister-in-law, who will be in turn her brother's wife, as an infallible integrative mechanism to celebrate the purity of the family. Mutual giving is also mandatory ritual in feasting uh, for the Indians. Regarding the type of alliance established in the community through culturally endogamous marriage inside the subgroup, but exogamous in terms of blood kinship, prohibition of incest, this can be expressed by the existence of a language of mutual benefit, gift for gift. The marital exchange relationship being always accompanied due to the community imbalance produced by the creation of new alliances by a whole system of prescriptions, prohibitions, obligations, commitments, rituals. In one word, norms of social cohesion and cultural interdetermination. In the traditional culture of the Roma, the respect, the trust, that the individual owns to his, her people, that he and she ensures through he and she or she existence in the spirit of the community laws is called pakiv, trust, respect, faith. In order to keep the structural relation model unaltered by the outside elements, culturally endogamous marriages develop pure and pure impure opposition, along with a series of sanction intending to punish any deviation from the model. Marriage is an event of utmost importance in the existence of both the Roma and the Indian communities, leading to the establishment of new kingship relations. So it appears essential to publicly recognize the new roles assumed, spouses, mother and father-in-law, and to mark the moment with an integrative ritual preceded by checking the observance of the prescriptions. Hypergamy, the wise, accedes through marriage to a superior status, or of the norm and of the norms, the virginity of the bride, and by the learning of the customary code through initiation rites. The father gives his daughter as wife to the groom, and the groom takes her, and the family will continue this system through the essential function of the woman that bearing children uh, uh, and transmitting the culture. With regard to the transition from the family of origin, orientation or consanguinity, belonging from birth to marriage, to the family of procreation, starting with marriage, the marriage is made by consensus of the two in-laws, the Hanamik families, without the need for an external formalization by fulfilling the customs, which def definitely change the status of the two protagonists, including them, exactly through this ritual of family creation among the members of the community. From Chavo, boy, to, and Chai, girl, they become Rom, man of ours, husband, Rom, and Romni, woman of ours, wife, Romni. Singles did not have in the past, in the nomadic lives, the right to pitch their own tent or to build their own house. In Indian culture, the processes are essentially similar. If being a whole man or woman means having a family 
And uh, belonging to the community means being married. Life without a wife is like a violin without strings, says a Roma old proverb. This mod of a model of ritual humanization is the basis of life. The family extended diachronically through filiation and genealogy and synchronously by alliance, Hanamik, and by affinity, spiritual kingship and godliness, godfather, uh, Romani, Kirvo. The latter is a prestigious relationship, sometimes the Roma taking the godparents even from among the gaje, but the relationship to them is not of value, son, daughter, and spiritual father and mother. It's not the same. The midwife, uh, both at Roma and at Indians, is mainly a puridai, a grandmother or old woman who enjoys respecting the family like any elder in the community, but at the same time, due to her participation to the impure act of giving birth, she's in turn touched by impurity. An institutionalized form of family consecration, marriage establishing kingship as a social and cultural category, which includes a ritual obligation, economic exchange relations in the community networks, structural unity, identity of aspiration and destiny, solidarity in the spirit of general brotherhood, pralipe, and a system of common rules and identity symbols. Both the Roma and the Indian families represent in fact the community, not only through the factors of social customary control, natural for any traditional culture, societies, but especially through the system of relations of cultural kinship, pralipe, fact for which we can call it a community family. The Rizom family unifies its root in a common stem and in the spirit of Epicurean philosophy of existence, oriented exclusively to the present, seemingly, seemingly disinterested in the far away um, uh, history or the past existence, the only history that really concern is the, concerns is the family history. Each individual being indebted to know his, her genealogy, not as an obligation of study, but naturally through the daily relationship with the family memory preserved in customs and taboos. For example, any Roma or Indian knows who the, his rel relatives are. And no matter how distant they are, uh, and if not, he and she strives to find them. So as not to be surprised when they meet, uh, when he meets them, Prinjarenlen. He also knows who the friends and the enemies of his families are and keeps the ban on, on not entering into marriage alliances with undesirable families. Marriage, both at Roma and at Indians, is a lifelong alliance between the two families. The bonding relationship between as uh, strong as of the blood, with members of both families holding the obligation to support each other in any situation, not to deny each other anything and give each other full confidence and help. The two families who will be married might even arrange the marriage of their children before birth in the past times, or strengthen the promise and strengthen their promise by oath. The wedding or abiao at the Roma is the time of maximum cooperation of community members, of communication at all levels, of communion, of sharing responsibility, responsibilities. Men help the women with household chores and as they usually do not. The wedding is the only holiday in which women sit at the table. This was in the past times together with the men normally in the past they eat at different tables, sometimes even in separate rooms. There is a reset of the hierarchy of the family in the sense of receiving new full members in the community. The wedding brings together all the members of the community without them receiving an invitation because coming uh, with the family to a wedding is a sign of respect and appreciation. And knowing the wedding is, and knowing the wedding and not coming means contempt and disregard a fact sanctioned by the community with the same coin. The only guests are the foreigners. The ceremonial moment is marked by fertility rites, sprinkling the bride, apotropaic rites. Divorced women and widows are not allowed to touch the bride so as not to contaminate her magically with evil, magic by contagion, and determinative rituals, uh, wishing and prayers, as well as the mimicry of ritual gesture of abduction, the flight of the bride and groom or the abduction of the bride is just mimicry. 
the bride and groom repeat the oath, Romanes Solar, of allegiance three times and break a bowl of water together, a sign that the bibacht, the bad luck, was broken and a symbol of the couple's fertility. Water is poured on the ground for young married couple to have children. The bride and groom, both the Roma and the, at the Roma and at the Indians at the wedding are silent and sit in a place as discreet as possible. They refrain from eating, drinking, and dancing too much. Uh, I, I still have a, a, few, a, a few things to say. Shall I continue or? Yeah, you can. You can take more five minutes. Uh, okay, okay, okay. I still have uh, some, something else. Uh, these customary behaviors of the bride and groom have several symbolic functions. Marriage seen, seen as a sacrifice of the individual for the benefit of the community. Marriage as initiation, which is required preceded by rituals of purification through fasting and abstinence. Looking at the ground, fasting, abstaining from dancing, shame, la jipe, for the wedding act uh, will still be followed. The virginity of the bride is very important both in the traditional Roma and Indian culture. The value of, has value of a sacrament due to several determining factors. It is the basis of morality, of the conception of pure and impure. It presupposes a rite of inauguration of creation and as well as the first pregnancy and birth. It is a guarantee that no foreign blood will appear in the family, remains uh, virgin until the wedding. The girls honor the family and the entire community, the in-laws and the husband, also all Roma, who will raise her daughter according to her mother. Very important, <clears throat> I will add also the role of woman. Uh, just a few words uh, from chai girl that she must maintain the physical and spiritual purity and honor her people to the body, daughter-in-law uh, or bride. She must, uh, she must uh, take care of the, of the household. She must give pakiv honor and respect to the in-laws and live uh, within the norms of the family. Romni, wife, she must raise and educate her children and organize the household. Dai, mother, she must educate her children in the spirit of traditional customs and rules. Sasui, mother-in-law, she becomes the mistress of the house, a more important character in the life in her daughter is law than the husband. And also, Puridai, mommy or grandmother, she acquires the supreme status in the community, as I said already, of absolute advisor who desires, whose desires become uh, orders for all the others. Uh, also very important, uh, I just a few words, the customs of birth and raising the baby has also uh, numerous rights of protection uh, surround the birth and the life of the newborn. Both at the Roma and the Indians, the child is tied around his neck with a protective and lucky bearer, which necessarily includes a gold coin, a symbol of power and value. Uh, in both families, traditional cultures, the forelock left on the child's forehead is considered lucky. Uh, he is, uh, the child is very much, uh, the birth of the child is very much, uh, it's a blessing in the family. It's very important, as I said, the cult of the children. Uh, also, there are uh, uh, many, many um, rituals during the pregnancy both for the Roma and Indian women. Um, they are linked with the right side of the body uh, in order to preserve the purity and to ensure maybe the birth of a, of a boy because the birth of the boy in a traditional patriarchal communities is seen as lucky. Of course, the girl's board of, birth of the girl is also seen very important from other point of view. So it's not uh, to, be, to be despised or inferior. Uh, as considered by the outsiders sometimes without understanding the, the true meaning of the, of the point. Uh, also, there are many, many, I will give examples, um, many rituals to facilitate the birth, um, as well as the tradition, as is the tradition of the dying person to afterlife, both in the both cultures. One example, all the knots in the house are untied because they are the symbols of relationship with the uncreated. In the Romani traditional culture, aiming to facilitate the birth, the man unties the shoelaces and turns the vessel, feminine symbol, upside down, not before putting its content on the doorstep. In Indian traditional culture, also aiming to facilitate the birth, the man unties all the knots in the house and brings a vessel full of water near the head of the woman who gives birth, at the same time sprinkling her belly with this water. So there are many, many other kind of, of uh, this kind of um, 
of uh, rituals and I have many, many examples. I will have no time to do it. Not to forget the boy, uh, the, um, besides the classic christening of the, of the child, uh, when the Roma became Christians, uh, there is uh, still a Romano baptism, a ritual of purification of the child, aiming to integrate him or her in the world. Is the so called the baptisms of the Romano baptisms of the earth, Obolimose Puviaco. In the nomadic times, the child was placed at the crossroad, magically inductive space on earth, and little earth was sprinkled on his scalp, wishing him or her good luck and happiness to induce her qualities, Taves Bartalo, Pakivalo, Barvalo, Aishukar, be lucky, honorable, rich, and beautiful. And the Roma no baptism of fire, Obolimose Agiaco, in which the child is passed over three times over the fires from the father arms to the arms of the godfather and vice versa for the same purpose of purifying the child and inducing uh, good in the child's life. Fire being at the same time an apotropaic element, especially for nomads. Now the last, uh, the last ideas, it's about funeral customs and the vision of death. Very important, very important in both culture. Both the Roma and the Indian cultures understand death as a passage to the eternal life, um, to the eternal circle of life, death, life. A necessary path to the future existing on earth or even better on an endless spiritual life, free of pain, doubt and fear, a final fulfillment of the individual spirit through this unification with a collective self representation of those common energies extension of the divine one. There are, <clears throat> there is this um, belief of the fact that the um, uh, body is impure and should be uh, given uh, to the non uh, Roma, like the Rashai, like the priest uh, to be given for the funeral customs, customs, but the soul is pure. And he or she, this soul is going to, to to the God that is seen more than a person. Actually, uh, also the belief, there is a belief in, a, there is a custom that um, uh, is a trace of the incineration uh, ritual. Uh, actually, uh, uh, I give an example, uh, an example of the, the, um, the Roma, uh, the Roma customs of, uh, of funeral customs, uh, actually the, um, the Smith, uh, the, the copper smith that are still um, firing uh, as a purifying role. They are no longer, of course, incinerated the dead as in the nomadic times, but uh, they are still, they are still, there are still uh, this uh, lightening of the fire uh, in order to, uh, to um, purify, to purify the community after the death and they washing the hands again for purifying. There are many, many, um, many um, kind of um, rituals of this type. And also there are rituals uh, that embody the attempt to ease the process of death. Uh, like uh, one is um, the ritual of mutual forgiveness. Uh, the, um, uh, the fact that um, uh, the beloved relatives also uh, might, should leave the dying person's room for the same purpose, not to influence uh, the dying persons to decide what to do. Uh, there, is, uh, there is a lot of um, um, discussion about the mourning that is also important in the both, uh, in the both culture. Believe in the chohano, in the undead, what to do with the ogi, with the soul, not to become this chohano and not to be given to the armaya. And the last things, but there are, there are many, many, but the last thing is, uh, also, uh, in the Roma wailings at the dead who was killed or believed to be killed, there are certain armaya courses and threats of revenge. Very important is the same in the Indian culture. Uh, you have the duty of honor. Uh, if he or she was killed, or you have this uh, this uh, this idea in your head, uh, you you should do something to 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 uh, to, to to the revenge. So it's it's a it's a curse saying. Mudardosa sai mangau te dikau e manusesca e mudardiales peco. Namerau ci canana mudaraules te halles o benga e te shukovenles ke kokala. Is a curse that say that uh, I will not be, um, I will, I will not uh, uh, die before seeing the man or the woman who killed this dead person, this relative of mine, uh, punished. Uh, and it's very important for the for the gi for the soul of the of the man. 
uh, as a conclusion. As a conclusion uh, on this, um, um, there are deep identity links between the Romani and the Indian traditional cultures, some inherited by the first one, some just common for all the traditional cultures in the Indo-European spiritual reconstituted region. But all of them are very important to be taken into account when speaking about both ancestral cultures. We should not, uh, we should not restrain ourselves uh, from believing that even if it's not inherited, it's just, it's just um, uh, a relationship which is not uh, uh, directly inherited, is very important to take into account for the building of the, of the identity of the Roma today, uh, to, um, uh, to acknowledge uh, and uh, to praise uh, the origins, uh, including the Indian, uh, the Bharat roots of our Romani pen. Uh, there are many other things to say. I, uh, I have in my paper many other things. Uh, I was too long, I uh, was too, maybe I too bored, but uh, I had in my mind, in my soul, so many, so many things to say, so many things to share with you. I'm so enthusiastic uh, to, it's the first time when I share with uh, our colleagues uh, from India and these this thoughts. And um, I thank you very much. And I now questions uh, and everything, uh, comments, I, I'm waiting for them. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Delia, you know, for your very illuminating and all-encompassing lecture that covers uh, myriad aspects and numerous aspects of Romani culture, including uh, the course of purity, the cleanliness, the impurity, defilement. You, you uh, talked, uh, you know, at length about the uh, the similarities between Indian cultural uh, uh, elements and Indian cultural elements. You talked about the uh, customary laws, how the customary laws between Roma and India are identical and analogous. You also talked about very important, that's a, a temporal and a spatial coherence. That's a very important. And uh, I think that has, uh, that gives a, a quite different dimension to the, uh, the cultural studies of Roma community. That what I personally believe. So you talk about uh, some, you know, the traditional and ethnic, uh, uh, the cultural similarities, the fire and horse, and the traditional uh, Romani cultural practices, and India, uh, Indian, uh, you know, the archaic and the hori, uh, the cultural practices in India as well. You talk a lot, you know, you talked about men, you talked about women and uh, women, especially, you know, the elderly, adolescent and adult, how they're defined role in the family, the familial structures and the familial bonds and how the factory locality correlates with the uh, usual Indian traditions. You, um, uh, you talk about marriage, how the marriage uh, is a very significant in the Romani family, how the family is the most significant band of the Romani society, how the Roma community lay uh, you know the great value on the uh, the close and close knit family ties. So um, you, I think you covered uh, almost uh, uh, almost uh, the every aspects. We talked about a spirituality. You talked about uh, you know that all the um, uh, the children, how the Roma people uh, consider the children. Uh, uh, he he or she may be the an embodiment of God and all the respect for the elderly people. It's a quite analogous and quite identical in Indian society as well. We have the, you know, the very uh, great respect for our elderly uh, 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 elders and the uh, older old people and how we treat the children in our family, in our social uh, structures. You also talked about the social structures and the family structures, how the role of women uh, is, how after the marriage, you know, the in her, um, uh, the bridegroom's family. So a lot, still you have a lot to say because you are already an author. You have uh, written a book and a very comprehensive book on the, the cultural elements of the community. So uh, we are really, uh, we uh, got and gained a lot of informations and some first-hand informations uh, about the uh, Roma culture and cultural heritage. Uh, so thank you very much. And on behalf of ARSP and the Center for Roma Studies, uh, we are uh, really thankful to you. And for, and that's, uh, and uh, we uh, also look forward to your uh, future participation in our future activities. 
So thank you very much, Delia Ji. Now the the room is open for the question answer. If uh, anyone has uh, any questions or want to put any remarks, or uh, he or she is a very uh, most welcome to raise the questions. Please, the floor is open for question answer. Please. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Pua, uh, you have some questions, I think. You go ahead. Yes, uh, I just want to say hello, everybody. Thank you for this beautiful presentation, dear uh, Della. Um, <clears throat> I come from Roma background myself. I'm from Iranian Roma background. Our people first came from India uh, during an, uh, Bahram Gol, or the... the <clears throat> Indian king to send some musicians and artists and uh, many, many uh, dignitaries over to, from India to Iran. So we stayed for a thousand years, mainly from the Punjab and Rajasthan region. You know, I'm uh, specifically Punjab region and Rajasthan. So we came from that region. Uh, I was listening to what you say regarding Romani Pen. Uh, although we have uh, Romani Pen is part of the <clears throat> practices, as you mentioned, for marriage and many other things. Uh, many, many Roma from Macedonia, from where I come from, Iran, you know, come from Eastern Europe. They are Orthodox, Muslim, or other religions. They seem to, um, I would say, they have inherited the religion that they are adopted to. So whether it's Islam or Christianity, so Romani pen, it's not as uh, widely spread in European Roma communities. Maybe some minority groups, perhaps maybe in Romania or in Russia or somewhere. Uh, but it, it has its roots uh, from many similarities with, with uh, Indian culture. Do you think uh, Romani pen can be in practice in 21st century, where in Europe there is much talk of uh, equality and uh, getting rid of all forms of discrimination because some of the practices really lowers the woman um, position in the society. And I don't think uh, for someone who uh, believes in uh, equality and also I believe in uh, giving women the same privileges as men, uh, we are living in 21st century, um, these practices um, should be in practice, you know. What do you, what is your opinion about it, if you don't mind sharing with us? Thank you. Of course, that's a very important point, uh, brother, very important point. Of course, what I described belongs to uh, ancient times, to ancestral times, and uh, there, there, there were reason in those times for this, for this kind of, I believe, protection. I do not believe in, in the inferior position of the woman in the patriarchal community is a different position is of course is discrimination but um, it's not inferior in my opinion it's just complementary it's a different but is assigned a position that is assigned which of course i'm a roma woman and a roma activist for human rights and of course i'm not i do not agree with anything that is assigned you know given like uh, you know like uh, from god and uh, you cannot change it uh, of course, uh, the role that is now of the woman in the society is also to work, also to bring to the family, also to uh, not only to the in the uh, in the household and only with the children and only with the inside, which is was not bad in those times. It, as I said, they, there were reasons, but now uh, from the Romani pen, other things might stand and might be there. Not all the customs we should, in my opinion, as activists for 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 Roma rights and also cultural activists. What we should do? We should see uh, in the Romani pen what is, uh, uh, what is eligible to be preserved in the modern society, and there are things. Uh, the first uh, thing is the language. I mean, the language is absolutely the first Romani language, very important uh, element of Romani pen that should be preserved, developed in literature, in media, everywhere. But also some traditions like all this respect for the adult, elders, all this uh, pakiv, these laws of respect and honor, uh, all this. Uh, I also I am uh, I am for uh, some of the purity laws that do not 
uh, break uh, the, the, the role of woman in a modern society and that do not um, make her not to be uh, in front line of everything in the society. There are, uh, there are uh, um, rules in the Roman, Romani pen that are very good and there are rules that are no longer uh, to be applied in the, in the modern society, of course. But the most important of, of them, of these, of these rules are still uh, important and we can still build our, our um, um, life uh, as identity uh, building and reconstructing our identity in this. Because the modern Romani pen, the modern Romani pen is, uh, as I said, Romani language, Romani literary language is also literature, is also media, is also a freedom of thinking, uh, but respecting also some old uh, views uh, on the world. Because um, if you respect uh, some, some old views, it does not mean that everything that was justified in the past should be also in the present. And what I want to say, in order to change, because us Roma activists, we want to change our societies, of course, to fight racism, because racism is huge. And now in the pandemic times, racism is also even worse against the Roma. And it's our role to fight racism and to preserve and develop and rebuild our identity in modern, in modern framework. Uh, but uh, in order to change our communities and the relationship between our communities and the rest of the world, we need to know, very important need to know why it was like that in the past. Because you cannot change something you don't know. You just suppose that the outsider said about us. No, we need to know very well everything, even the bad things. We need to speak about them, to know them, the, to praise what is good and to change what is bad, but we need to know. And knowing we can change, and also we can change the perception of the non-Roma of the Gaje because there are many stereotypes, many prejudices, and this huge racism against the Roma is very well known, the anti-gypsism, I don't like the word gypsy, but the anti-Roma racism is, is very well known everywhere in the world. And we are still very much discriminated, excluded from the society. One example is the slavery in Romanian countries, yeah. Roma. Uh, the slavery in the Romanian countries. Roma were slaves in the Romanian countries for more than 500 years. Who knows? Nobody. Nobody in this society, in the school is not taught, in the media is not spoken. It's just among us, among the Roma and some friends and some specialists. So there's a huge need for the memory of the history, the history that was a history that was tragic history against the Roma a history that, that, uh, that uh, excluded us and hurts us and make a huge harm to us. And slavery is just an example, not to speak about the Holocaust uh, that is also put aside. We are the, the, for, the, for, the forgiven Holocaust. We are the forgetted uh, we, Holocaust. We are the forgotten race, unfortunately. Yes, more forgotten, than two million forgotten. Roma died and Sinti, yes. And nobody wants, um, nobody, very few wants to acknowledge this. Uh, it's still the Holocaust only of the Jews, I'm sorry to say. And us Roma, we are not taken into account as the victims and as the, in the reparatory, in the reparatory and the, the compensatory movement of reparation, we are all the time somewhere the second type of victims, the second of victims, you know, not the, the first. And this is wrong. Thank you. Nice to get you, Evan Bachtali, Miri Thank you very much. Your God bless you for bringing that for us, for telling about the Holocaust, because recently, sorry, I'm not going to take away your conversation. Please, There's please. a person by the name of Jeremy Carr or Jimmy Carr, a, a British comedian, has spoken about the Holocaust as a joke, and he mentioned that uh, it's a positive thing that hundreds of thousands and Roma died. This is something I would highly would like to ask my dear Indian brothers and sisters to consider this for us, because uh, we come from India. This is our motherland, you know, historical motherland. My roots are from India. You know, I, I even learning some Hindi word, you know, because I love my culture. You know, this is my ancestral land. I have much love and respect for India as I have for our born in Iran. Uh, but this is serious because 
everyone can say things that you know our ancestors were sent to gas chambers they were killed yeah. you know there was horrible things happened uh, and uh, mm -hmm. this man can joke about it and get yeah. away with it there's no apology you there's know, no fine you, there's can nothing you, uh, you know, can you share that statement with zamir so that we can have yeah, a look I have. on it Yes, okay, and I, so. I, have, I know it was shared. Very get back important. To you. We are I, thank you, sir. This. Oh, sorry yes. to interrupt. <laughs> Very no, good. No, 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 you didn't interrupt. You just you just added, and, and that, that's exactly what happens. Our history, uh, tragic history, is not recognized. It's still not mm. recognized. Uh, and I spoke very much about slavery because slavery. How many? Everybody speaks about the Afro Americans when they speak about slavery, but Roma yeah. were slaves many years, more, more in years, a longer time than the Afro-Americans. And nobody in the world uh, pr pr promotes this. Nobody in the world speaks about this memory. There is no monument. There is no memorial, no research. Let's do it together. Uh, Zamer, friends, brothers, sisters, let's open this discussion very, very uh, openly. Okay, traditional culture is good, but what about history and its consequences on today's memory? On the place that we are, uh, we are put uh, somewhere outside uh, the outside um, the societies. So let's let's uh, do some research together to for the memory of the of the um, of the Roma slavery, uh, the Holocaust against the Roma, and the today's racism, today's hate speech, hate speech in the television, today's uh, police abuses in the Roma communities in in Europe. This is the realities of today. That's beautiful, the culture. But today's culture is harmed by this by this racism against the Roma, and we should fight uh, uh, together, uh, shoulder to shoulder, to 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 fight against this racism that that uh, that uh, uh, kills still kills the Roma in in the world. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank you very much, Uha and uh, Delia Ji and uh, Rajesh Ji. I would like to bring to your notice that we have already reported this incident in our newsletter, in the previous yeah. newsletter, that uh, about this the British comedian who, uh, uh, you know, the poke the joke at the uh, Romani Holocaust. So uh, we do, uh, you know, we do cover such kind of stories and such kind of reports and the news <clears throat> in our newsletter. So uh, uh, I think- Nabir, uh, may I say something? Just 30 yeah. seconds. Uh, fine you have the report and you have reported the report that is one thing but the thing is that reporting something which has already been reported and in circulation all around the world uh, maybe maybe serving some purpose but uh, when our brothers inform us that this is being done is it not our duty and responsibility and obligation to react to that report and do something so that the person who has dared to crack this joke on our brothers and sisters has some heat to feel and so that in the for the coming times there is a deterrent of the action taken by us he should everyone should uh, think about 10 times before saying anything against the roma if that action has not been taken by our brothers and sisters in european countries why can't we do it we should do it right i i like to intervene here Oh, I want to say that yeah. this, just, this, just, this just, criminal uh, Jim Carrey is coming to Romania uh, next uh, in the next months. He's coming to Romania. We should prepare a manifestation against him. Sorry. Brother, uh, you should ask your government that he should not allow to enter into this country. Why it's uh, it, uh, they are coming uh, through some uh, private, uh, co you know, um, arrangement of event. Uh, I don't know what. We will ask. We will see. Yeah. I'm. I'm. I'm glad that. Brother Rajesh Goguna spoke, who is a lawyer, senior lawyer, and runs a human rights defense international organization from Delhi. And if you can organize a day's uh, a webinar or, or, or a conference on human rights of Romas, it will bring the things to everybody's notice. And we like, would like this to be published in Indian media, and we can ask Indian media to to publish this or show on TV channels. That can be done some way. So this is a serious affair that everybody needs to take care of. Thank you. Uh, sorry, uh, Shamji, something was coming to my mind. Being yeah, an activist and uh, and a person who always reacts, 
but uh, i was saying that although i don't see anything without the permission and approval of sham parade ji but i am tempted to say something which i i i feel that sham ji is not going to rebuke me <laughs> why can't our organization that is the human rights defense international slap with a legal notice to that bloody person that you have taken it tender and unconditional apology or we will see that you are not able to travel any country or enter our country in india right. and uh, once this notice is sent it can be put into circulation and it would have some impact just by but i'm sorry i'm an activist so i say okay talk about the things have webinars but we should do something more we should have a punch on their face they should feel the heat so um, but sorry for the first time i'm saying something without the permission or approval of shampara <laughs> so no, no, it is your, it is the responsibility of delia and other friends They, they should save me if he rebukes me later on. It's oh, important. Fine. That's fine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I will will follow this. Yeah. Yeah. Any more questions? Do you have any more questions? Please. Any more questions? First, Ivan. I'm Maria. Hello. I want to ask you if you feel that if you if you feel we make parts from this big country from Mama India. If you don't feel that, the hope is gone. That's my opinion. Thank you. All right. Shall I shall I answer? Yeah. Uh, being here with our brothers and sisters in uh, in India, at least virtually online, uh, means that I am linked, and I uh, I'm linked spiritually, and I feel uh, this link with uh, with our mother. Uh, former mother country but uh, i want to say openly something i do believe that india should do more oh, i do believe that the we government are, are the indian it. government should do more in a, a not a, some say you know some say oh uh, don't do it uh, they want to take us back in india and the europeans will be happy uh, to exclude us and to expel us in india back in india uh, don't do it this is a betrayal no we are european yes we are european yes uh, we are uh, we are uh, our roots are from india from the byzantium from the iran and persia from the, the imperial uh, from the greek also some uh, cultural relationship we have yeah but we are european because the most of the roma number uh, 12 million are in europe but also in australia also in the united states also in the south america everywhere we are european but we are a minority white we are a national minority only recognized in 14 countries that's very few countries including a member of the european union like the greece and like the F- france they do not recognize minorities and do not recognize roma also so we need political support from the indian government not to go back to india don't worry Don't worry, Roma. Don't worry, brothers from India. We don't want to go back. This is our life now. We are in Europe and in all these continents. But we need the the, the political support from Indian government. Not only declaration. Not only like Indira Gandhi said, brothers, sisters from the big tree of the mother, father, all these things. No, we don't need only declaration. We need the recognition. of uh, us as being a minority a, a, a minority a national minority that is rooted in india uh, and we need political support and fighting of the indian government that is a powerful government as a powerful country to fight against racism in europe against the roma anti roma racism we need investment sorry to say we need investment uh, of the uh, india government and india money sorry to say this very directly in the romani culture in the culture not in the charity no 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 we don't need from india charity or uh, money for social problems no this will do it in another way no we need money for the culture for the roma development of culture language uh, a museum we need the roma the, the indian government to support the costs of a roma museum let's give an example of a roma monument against the holocaust of the roma monument against the slavery i mean uh, this is a, as a conclusion 
uh, in order to feel uh, lacrima pink, this uh, Maria is my student uh, at the Romani faculty, at the Romani uh, the section in the faculty. And thank you for coming, my Maria. Uh, and thank you for asking. Uh, in order to, it was nothing arranged. <laughs> uh, in order to feel uh, uh, that I am the sense of belonging, I need more than cultural relationship and good brothers and sisters. So as a conclusion is about being recognized and protected by the Indian government where we are, in the countries where we are, protected against racism and uh, protected in order to develop our culture our language, our culture, and our uh, all these uh, this, uh, this identity matters rooted in India. This is what we need. And I will really feel more, uh, uh, how to say, uh, linked and more um, and happy with this uh, uh, Bharat roots of our Romani pen. Oh, look, uh, Agnes, thank you. <laughs> she is also on to speak. Thank you. You can unmute. Lacrima, you can unmute yourself. You can unmute yourself, Lacrima. Agnes has a question. Okay, yeah, okay, yes, okay, sorry. Yes. Actually, uh, sorry for my niche. For, for how long time we promote uh, by who, you, who we are, uh, it's very important to promote this, that's that's our that's um, that's uh, it's what we need to promote this uh, idea who he was, who we are, and what we can do. I what can I say? For example, we don't have a radio in 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 Romania uh, to to tell about our culture. Uh, it's it's a long story, but we need help. In, in I don't know in how how mode, but it's not impossible. We can do it. All right. All right. Thank you very much, like You're very emotional. Uh, you know the uh, speech. And now, uh, Dr. Punita ji, uh, she has a question. Yes, Punita ji, please. Actually, Agnes had a had a comment. She raised. Uh, her Agnes hand. wanted to say yes. something. Yes. Go she ahead. May I say? Yes, ma'am, please. Okay, thank you. Uh, first of all, I would like to congratulate to, to Delia Grigore. It was wonderful, really. Um, only one small sentence and a citation from Karo Ibori. He wrote in Hungarian, a hagyománya in Kőriznek minket, our traditions pre uh, preserve us not we, the costumes, but just the opposite. Um, those uh, costumes, what you wrote about Romanic pay, Romanic culture, you find mainly in autochton communities. And if we or somebody even in Europe would like to understand the so-called Romani pay, have to make a route back to those autochthon communities to understand. And this is very, very important, your uh, lectures and, and your uh, written material. And I would like very much to see it also in Hungarian and in all international languages translated. The other sentence from me, I deeply agree with you, India has the possibility and probably also, uh, how to say? Capability. A, a, a big um, chance to strengthen our status. And only one very small example, Behind me, you can see the probably the most interesting, uh, most interesting exhibition from Roma authors uh, for 40 years long. In my workplace, I collected these with my colleagues together. But let's say in Hungary, there is 
no place, no official Roma institutions where we can show it for the majority. So it's very simple to live with prejudice and, and uh, to strengthen the hate against us if we do not have institutions where we can show our common history and our values. And that's the very important way and place where India can help us. Please do it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Dr. Koziji. Thank you very much. So any more questions? Yeah. What? Yeah, someone else had raised a hand, but then after that, yeah, me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, Dr. Sonia. Yes, I basically, it's not a question. I just want to add something that <clears throat> since I've been in this, you know, Roma lecture from last so many days and all the lecture series I've been, uh, I was there in that. And I was glad that I come to know about Roma culture and all about uh, the, uh, what Roma culture is and uh, how they work and how, what are the problems. Uh, I have, I just want to add one thing that can we do, uh, or it is just a request or um, so, uh, can we do some programs so that university students through uh, Roma Center only that so that university students can also know that there is something going on, you know, <clears throat> within the Roma uh, uh, community, which we should also know and the university students should also know about that. So th we can uh, organize small seminars or webinars. Uh, uh, through online because uh, right, right now there's no offline mode so we can take an initiative to you know uh, so that students and our other other faculty members should also know about the Romani, uh, Roma culture and what is uh, India uh, India's contribution so that we 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 can also uh, I am also uh, you know I, I know about just um, a few days before when I joined this, uh, you know, uh, uh, seminar or lecture. So I want that it should go to all the faculty members and students also so that they should also know what we are doing and what Roma Cult Center is doing. And they should also know that uh, uh, what, how they can help it uh, in, uh, you know, um, how we can help it in, um, uh, uh, you know, coming out of this, uh, 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 cultural, how, how we can uh, know or how students can know about the Roma culture uh, center and Romanian culture. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sonia. We do, uh, uh, we do put into our notice and we will obviously work on this and how we can engage the, uh, the college students and this, uh, the PhD scholars uh, in this particular uh, uh, exchange, you know, means the yeah, it, knowledge yeah, it exchange. Be, yeah, yeah, it should be right. a knowledge exchange or cultural exchange program through right. so that university students should also know what's going on in this center Thanks. and the Roman, yeah. Thank you very much. Yes, Punita ji, please. Yeah, yeah, Delia, that was such a comprehensive presentation. It was really great. And I'd I would also like Agnes like to read more about um, what, you, what you've written. But my question is also related to some of the discussion, which is about the evolution of Rom Romani pay. Because what you talked about was, you know, sort of frozen in time. I mean, it seems to be about an era that's almost, almost bygone because from extensive travels across Europe, the places where I've seen Mar Marime in action or this kind of, a lot of these rituals in action, there are, there are, it's not everywhere. It's only in some places, very often also correlated with the religious practice of the community. For example, in Shutka in Macedonia, you will still find, uh, you know, the practice of Marime quite strong or in some places in Romania, you might find also. But then there's an overlay because you've got the Pentecostal uh, faith going on and you've got so many other influences plus the local culture. And so Romani pay is not a static thing, right? It's been evolving. And so where is it today? I mean, in terms of 
even Indian culture, a lot of the things that you mentioned ha are, are historic. Like we no longer follow many of those things. So in terms of if we were to have like a dynamic correlation, you know, so India uh, and Roma and like a dynamic, how has this been evolving over the years? Um, do you have any sort of insights on that, you know, in terms of are, are they evolving in tandem or is there a time displacement between them? Yeah. Of course, uh, Punita, thank you very much. My sister, we know each other for a long time and thank you for coming and honoring me. With I was just question. trying to calculate when I first met you, like 18 years ago, I think. Yes, yes, yes. In, uh, uh, I, I, of yeah. course, I spoke. I, I just wanted to spoke yeah. about this capsule of time, you know. Uh, yeah. how it was, because we need to know. And people do not know, this is the problem, not you. Uh, we know here, but the rest of the people, the non-Roma, the gadget, they do not know. They only have this uh, exotic stereotype. They cannot understand. I want to un them to understand the real inside motivation, why it was like that. We are not savage. We are not the, I don't know how they see us. I don't know how they, I, I know how they see us under the racism view. So what I wanted is to just uh, uh, preserve this. That is why I said in the beginning, it's about doubt, doubt, you know, and during, because that, that, that's the, the past. Uh, that's the past uh, that no longer exists, only some of them exist, of course, from there. And it's better, it's good that it's not uh, like that now, uh, because society develops, society evolves. Uh, Romani pen is also not immutable, uh, it changes. But I want to say that still Romani Pen is there, uh, is a reformed, uh, is a new Romani Pen. This is what we want to build our Roma movement, like the European Institute for Arts and Culture, where I'm very proud to be a member of the Barbary Pen Academy. Also, every, uh, all our organizations, our activism is in order to rebuild the Romani Pen. First step is that to know the past to know the and understand the ancestral view of our uh, ancestors, their view, how and why they were like that. Something now is no longer uh, applicable. Something in the all many things uh, now are no longer naturally no longer uh, practiced, and also some of them should not be practiced because they are in contradiction with, uh, let's say, the, the present and the, the, the actual uh, human rights and everything. So uh, what we need to do is to rebuild, uh, and you know very well, and of course, Agnes know very well, and all our movement know very well, we want to rebuild the Romani pen based on the traditional old ancestors' views and spiritual culture, uh, and that is anyway reforming itself from inside, not from outside, organically reformed. And this is very important how you reform it, because if you reform it from outside, that is wrong. It should be from inside, uh, all this renewal and all this reformed and new Romani pay. And we can uh, see what is, uh, what is possible. And it is possible, as I said, first thing is the language preservation of language, written language, literary language, literature written in the Romani language, uh, media, radio, TV, uh, Facebook, everything in Romani language. Uh, also, traditional costumes, symbolically, not to wear every day. No, of course not, but symbolically from time to time as a, as a, as a symbol of identity. Uh, our new, the flag, that the flag is also inspired from the Indian flag. The Roman international flag is inspired from the Roma, from the Indian flag. And this is a modern symbol. And um, all our, um, our ways of respecting uh, among each other and of, uh, of um, helping and uni our unity that is lost. Uh, sometimes our unity is lost and we should regain it because unity, solidarity, brotherhood, this is good. And these uh, should be uh, included, and they are included in the new modern Romani Pe. The next book I, I will write, I'll write about the modern Romani Pe. I have some articles, but I will, I will not want to be seen as conservative. I am not conservative at all, being in Ariac, who would have uh, received me as a conservative mind. I am, of course, uh, I wrote about this ancestor 
uh, old ancestral um, uh, um, culture and I am not saying that I didn't and I, I'm against it, no. But we need to know it in order to change it, as I said. And we need to preserve the most important things because there are things that are needed to be preserved. And I gave the example of, of, um, of um, language, but also respect and also solidarity and mutual help and many, many things from the Romani pen that are not at all in contradiction with a modern society, but they need to uh, educate the modern society to do like that, because uh, it's better to keep the elders in the family and not to give them to the asylum. And this is nothing against the modern life, no? Uh, it's better to uh, praise the child and to raise the child to respect the family and everything. And this is not against the modern society. And many, many, many other things uh, that in the modern Romani P, in the reformed Romani P will be there. Uh, and also other that are no longer there. So this is the new Romani P that we want to build based on the ancestors' views, but also on the reform view of our uh, today's uh, Roma activism and to include, very important to include the, the fight, very strong fight we need to do against racism because racism against Roma, anti-Roma racism is raising and is finding new shapes. We see the new shapes against uh, Roma everywhere. Uh, today, tomorrow, everywhere, especially in this uh, so-called, um, uh, let's, uh, they call it them, uh, the jokes, you know, these jokes against the Roma, this um, uh, so-called, um, they, they say, okay, this is a, uh, we can joke because it's uh, entertainment, you know, entertainment uh, TV shows. And in every day, every day you see in the entertainment TV shows, the, the bad jokes against the Roma, the irony against the Roma, the uh, satire against the Roma. Uh, and they say, this is a pamphlet. That's okay. No, it's not okay. It's not okay uh, at all. It strengthens the stereotype and the hate against the Roma. And there is a hate against the Roma in the society. And we should fight it. That's it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Delia. Actually, we have already you know, exceeded the stipulated duration of the lecture. And I do agree with your views that we cannot forget the past in order to build a new. So we do uh, build a new on the, uh, on the ground of uh, you know, the old cultural uh, foundation. So thank you very much. Now I would like to, uh, sorry, I cannot take any more questions because we have already, we have already uh, exceeded the time. Uh, so now I would like to uh, request our uh, Secretary General, uh, Shri Shyam Prandeji. Uh, he is the Secretary General of Antarastya Sahyog Parishad and under his guidance, uh, this Roma Center is functioning. So I humbly request, sir, to please uh, uh, deliver the official word of thanks, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Well, today, we listen to the, to the voice of Roma. And I do, I do appreciate that the Roma community over the centuries, despite inhuman sufferings, have preserved the culture. And when I talk about the culture, like Dr. Delia talked about, the similarities are overwhelming. And the last question from Punita Ji was, was brought it together. You see, in Indian culture, it is believed that there are two parts of life or culture and one is Smriti and then the other is Shruti. Shruti is the ethos. Ethos should not be lost. Like rites and rituals and customs might be altered. The form alters. The inner core value shall never change. And that's where we have lived 
the test of time millennia millennia over and over we survive because we keep our self changing maintaining the value system the ethos without losing the ethos roma community suffered because in last century or two centuries or three centuries even india was suffering now the, the the india is rising the bharat is rising and i am quite hopeful and and the interventions that i listen to that india should speak for roma yes it will however india is not aware the masses apart even the intellectuals academicians the politicians they are not aware they had that they have brothers and sisters living in europe or spread across the world and precisely speaking they are a huge strength 20 million spread over europe and other countries can be an asset to india cultural assets obviously and when you said that you are not going to return well we will we will welcome you with open arms whether you wish to come or not is up to you because you are the beloved ones you are the brothers and sisters and when india says or indians say that vasudhai va kutumbakam each of your word was an expression of the family the whole global family and that we live through it's not only the words or the phrases by that, that we throw we live like that and we are proud of roma community that they live with those values despite being away from the country the 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 very concept of dharma you talked about is unique to india and that's where we look at the whole creation you talked of customs and uh, and, and rites and rituals all of these these rites and rituals take us or show us our connectivity with the whole creation because we believe that or we call mother earth mother nature and the elements agni we worship wind vayu we worship all the elements we worship because they give us the life they give us the energy to live and they make us work think and lead life so all these are value systems that roma and india has in common so we need to connect better there might be delay in reaching out to you in your challenges but india or the bharat will surely reach out to you and couple of other points that you talked about the worshiping horse worshiping uh, uh, animals and worshiping trees and all that is part of indian culture so that you carry it. and then you talked about feminine so feminine devotee uh, divinities feminine divinities is a concept which is indigenous to india and we have a lot of them and and, and historical or prehistoric times we had been worshiping so we looked at both masculine and feminine as complementary and and it's it's shiva in and the parvati in the form they 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 creating one single person ardhanati nari narishwar they say so these are the concepts that we have been living with but rightly as the last point made urbanization has changed or globalization even of recent has changed many things and we need not we should not we should adhere to the ethos as hard as possible while we alter the customs and the rituals that we can 
keeping the ethos intact and live with those ethos and pass on those value systems. The language you talked about, the language is essential for the culture. It's the expression. So it should not never, it should never be lost despite emerging international languages, emerging national languages that has to have because we need to communicate. However, mother tongues should never be lost because that's where my culture, that's where our everybody's culture lives through. That's the expression and that's most valuable for all of us. So it's like that, that despite all these developments, we need to, and, and, and uh, 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 Agnes made the right point that it's in the urban areas and, and uh, or we have lost, the urban areas have lost and, and rural areas have retained that. But then somewhere down the line, we'll have to all put it together, come together and express it in as many ways as possible. With that, I thank you very much on behalf of Antarashtriya Sahyog Parishad, my organization and Center for Roma Studies and Cultural Relations. I thank you all, especially amazing lecture it was. Professor Delia, everybody liked it and we love to listen to you or read your books again and again. Thank you very much and thank you everybody for joining. Namaste. Pranam. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Pranam.